Hey everybody, this is Bridget Danner and I'm on today with my friend and colleague, Dr. Jolene Brighton. Welcome Jolene. Hey there, how are you today? I'm great, I'm great. So we are here to celebrate and talk <laughs> about your new book, Beyond the Pill. Um, when did it come out? What was the release date? January 29th. January yeah. 29th, so just so, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, brand new. <clears throat> nice, nice. Well, I just give us the overview. Like, why did you write this book? What's this book about? Yeah, so it's called Beyond the Pill because it's designed to give women root cause solutions to their common hormone issues beyond birth control. So we know that all day, every day, a woman can go to her gynecologist and say, I have a lady part problem and they're going to pass you the pill for every female ill is what I call it. And so I wanted women to understand what do their hormones do in their body? What do their period symptoms mean? What do hormone symptoms mean? What they can do about it in terms of investigating with their doctor getting lab testing and then finding solutions so that they feel better. And should they choose to use hormonal birth control, whether it be for symptoms or for contraceptive reasons, then they also can understand what that's doing to their body and how they can monitor their symptoms and potential side effects and stay safe while they're on it. Okay. Awesome. So tell us about like, why would anyone like wants to not use the pill. Like what, you know, like that's like the miracle drug, right? Like, oh, I just take a pill and my skin clears up and like, you know, I don't have cramps anymore and all that stuff. So we, what are some, some of the downsides? Yeah. You know, and to your point there, like, you know, this was a drug a medication that was formulated and created so that we could delay pregnancy or space our pregnancies. And then, you know, it was about the time I was coming into my reproductive years that the, everything shifted and it became like, this is the cure-all for any female complaint as just to shut down the reproductive system. So we understand that about 58% of women are using hormonal birth control for symptom management. And these are symptoms that have a root cause. So like you pointed out, acne, as about 14% of women are prescribed birth control for acne, not for babies, not for preventing babies. That's like a benefit, but it's mainly to treat their skin. Things like heavy periods, painful periods. I mean, that's definitely top of the list, but as you and I know, these things have a root cause. Yeah. So if you have heavy, painful periods, you know, maybe it is that you don't have enough prostaglandins or enough, uh, or excuse me, you have the wrong kind of prostaglandins from not enough uh, omega-3 fatty acids or you're magnesium deficient giving you the pill to treat something that's a magnesium deficiency, that's a big problem because the pill is going to deplete magnesium further. So now you feel like you're stuck on this pill because it, what is really going on at the root cause is that you need magnesium. Or perhaps this is an issue that you have polycystic ovarian syndrome or endometriosis. You have a right to have that conversation with your doctor and for them to at least you know, work you up the best they can. If it's a young gal with endometriosis, you know, we don't, we don't want to do surgery in a young girl's pelvis, but at least mentioning to her that like, look, we're going to use this pill for symptom management. However, the root cause of this may be endometriosis. There's other providers that can help you with that and help you, you know, work on the diet lifestyle components, you know, you know, get to the root cause of that. And if things don't resolve, we can do testing again in the future. Now, with hormonal birth control, there's a lot of things that we were never told. I mean, I did a decade on the pill and I certainly wasn't told these things, but it depletes nutrients. So it depletes magnesium, selenium, zinc, folate, B12, antioxidants, things like CoQ10. So that's a big problem. If you're on hormonal birth control and it's making you lose nutrients, you're going to have to replenish those. That's why I recommend that if a woman chooses to use birth control, get yourself on a prenatal or a multivitamin. The reality is, is that it's not 100% effective. You may become pregnant and the very nutrients you need to support a life in your body mm. are being depleted by the pill. Mm, good point. Now, it also hurts the microbiome big time. I mean, research has said that it's similar to antibiotics in terms of how it affects microbial diversity. And in addition to that, it causes leaky gut. So intestinal hyperpermeability, which is a big problem for food sensitivities, for autoimmune disease. And you know, in addition to that, we see dysbiosis. So overgrowth of yeast has been well documented in the mouth, in the mm -hmm. gut, and in the vagina for as long as you're on it. So there's a lot of ways, and I could go into a lot of details. I mean, Beyond the Pill has a chapter on gut health, liver health, on your adrenal and thyroid function, what's going on with your libido, your fertility, your mood. So what's happening with anxiety and depression, and really walks you through all of those side effects. And then of course, the big scary ones, which is cancer, stroke, clots, heart attack, which was 
the hardest chapter for me to write because I wanted to write a book where you didn't feel afraid. You didn't feel afraid if you chose not to use the pill, if you chose to come off of it, or if you chose to go on hormonal contraceptives. And for the women who are always like, is this book just about the pill? Understand that the pill was the first to step onto the scene. So we have the most research. So I talk a lot about the pill, but whenever I'm talking about progestins and the issue with progestins, which is synthetic progesterone, that applies to the IUD, that applies to the depo shot, that applies to these other forms of hormonal contraceptives. The ring. Yeah. I remember I used to be on the ring and I'm just going to confess here. I read Vanity Fair every month magazine, every month of my life. And I saw an article in there about birth control and like third generation, second generation, like um, patents, right? So they have mm -hmm. to change the patent. And it was so eye opening to me. And it was basically an expose about these young women developing like clots and dying at like mm -hmm. 29, 27. And it was just really eye opening to me because yeah, we don't want to talk about all that scary stuff, but like, yeah, again, you walk into your doctor's office. I ha I'm having acne. Yeah. I'm dating like, yeah, the pill makes sense. Um, but there are side effects, some of them very serious. So yeah, it's a convenient thing, but there are tons, even more downsides than we just talked about right now. Um, and ultimately, you know, you want to work with your body as you and I know, many people come off the pill wanting to get pregnant. They have no idea what their cycle is like, mm -hmm. nourish their cycle. Um, you know, they now that maybe they're autoimmune from all this stress on their body and, you know, you're not, you're not really living in harmony with yourself when you're on the pill because everything's kind of numbed out. So yeah, I think it's, this book is so important. It's so important to not just you know, trust that little magical pill and really learn your body. So this, you know, there's a lot of chapters in here. You mentioned like lots of different reasons people would take the pill. I wonder if maybe we can focus, like, what would you say is like the number one period complaint you hear about? And maybe we can focus on some natural solutions for that. Yeah. I think, you know, the number one period complaint of all women, women really comes down to estrogen dominance. I think that's the biggest issue. Of course, hypothyroidism is really, really common and that's rooted in, um, you know, abnormal periods. So you'll see uh, that, you know, you can lose your period because of hypothyroidism or be infertile, have irregular periods. But along with that is usually estrogen dominance. And that's why estrogen dominance is the winner. And, you know, the number one symptom reason women get on the pill is for painful periods. And so this is something that we understand that painful and they usually are painful and heavy. They usually go hand in hand that way. And, um, with that, you know, we understand that estrogen dominance is a component. So for people who haven't heard that term before, um, estrogen is not bad, okay? Estrogen is a very, very good hormone. The problem is, is when there's way too much of it. So frank estrogen dominance, which can come from poor detoxification. So your liver is not optimized. You're not pooping. Um, or, you know, maybe you're using hormonal birth control. So the pill is definitely a form of estrogen dominance because it's a high enough dose of hormones to shut down how your brain and ovaries are communicating. And that's the mechanism by how it works. And the other issue can be environmental toxins that lead to just elevated levels of uh, estrogen. And of course, you know, fat cells, they love to make themselves some estrogen. So if you have increased adiposity, which is, you know, excess body fat, which could be because of hypothyroidism, environmental toxins, what's going on with your gut, or, you know, there's so many other reasons why, you know, women struggle with their weight that can also lead to you creating more estrogen in your body. Now there's relative estrogen dominance as well, which is where you are not ovulating or you're stressed out or you don't have enough vitamin C or something is causing you not to make enough progesterone. And so your estrogen is actually fine, but the problem is, is relative to the amount of progesterone, which is the main hormone in the luteal phase, the second half of your cycle that follows ovulation, that lack of progesterone is not challenging estrogen. And so now we have the PMS symptoms. So we'll be irritable. Our breasts will be swollen and tender. Um, we can definitely have, uh, you know, feeling like sweaty or having hot flashes at night. We, you know, can have difficulty sleeping. You can have anxiety as well. Your mind's racing. And so all of that is like the, the, you know, the classic kind of PMS symptoms. And then when your period comes, it can be really heavy and painful. Now, the reason for that, and as I talk about in Beyond the Pill, um, is not just estrogen, but estrogen metabolites. And so in the uh, birth control hormone detox chapter, that chapter takes you through how sometimes your estrogen looks fine on labs and your doctor's like, you're not estrogen dominant. 
your estrogen looks fine. But then we look at your metabolites and your 16 hydroxy E1 is through the roof. Now that's an estrogen metabolite that's going to stimulate growth, growth of your breasts, growth of your endometrium, growth of like anything you don't want to grow. Think about cysts, fibroids, all of those growths. You don't want them. This is the metabolite causing that. Now, it can stimulate the endometrium to grow. And that is the lining of your uterus. So it'll thicken. And so you've got a lot more to shed. And then you have these clotty, heavy, heavier periods. Now, in addition with that, and you know, estrogen can be inflammatory when left unchecked, but a lot of the ways that we find ourselves going into estrogen dominance, you know, some of those can be because we are eating more inflammatory fats. We don't have enough fiber in the diet to help us eliminate estrogen and keep the bowels and the gut healthy because those gut bugs, if they're not happy, they're going to make all this beta glucuronidase that's going to, that even if your liver does package up everything correctly to move it out of your body, that estrogen, the gut can put it back into circulation. Mm -hmm. And so the other issue is, you know, having low magnesium or low omega-3 fatty acids in the diet that can also impact what's going on. And so these really crampy periods, you know, there's usually estrogen and prostaglandin issues going on. And so with that, Getting more, uh, you know, omega threes in your diet, I think, is an excellent approach because when you're eating fatty fish, you also have the benefit of getting selenium and iodine, which go back to that hypothyroidism issue. So it helps support your thyroid. And for people, that we get so many questions where people are like, "But I thought you said iodine's bad. Iodine in excess." in presence of a selenium deficiency is bad. That's a bad scene. But if you're eating fish, you're actually getting a good balance of selenium and iodine. It's like a great way to be consuming that. Now, um, taking magnesium, I think can't be understated. I, I would love to say just eat a diet rich in magnesium, but as we know, the food supply is really lacking. And so in Beyond the Pill, I actually have, I have a chart with supplements. So it's like period problem. Here's the supplements that can help. And then we have a whole nother section where it's like period problem. Here's what your doctor should investigate the potential cause. Here's the labs that they need to do. And here are solutions you can do right now. And magnesium is one of those of taking at least 300 milligrams of magnesium. Um, I really encourage women to stay away from the citrate and instead opt for like a bisglycinate uh, form. And the reason is, is because odds are if you've got period cramps, you've also got period diarrhea. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes to talk about that, but that's those prostaglandins. And so then women are like, oh, you said magnesium will help. I took magnesium citrate. I can't stop pooping. And I was like, well, that, that's how that works. Like you're getting your estrogen You can out. actually use it for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, if that is true for you, if you have menstrual cramps, you probably don't want to be, you know, hitting the natural calm, which is like everybody's go-to because it's everywhere. It's so easy yeah. to get. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's a, it's not a good scene if like you've got heavy, painful periods, lots of, lots of flow going on. And plus you're pooping all the time. That's just like nobody wants to deal with that in a day. Um, so the omega-3s and uh, magnesium can help tremendously. As I talk about in my book, increasing your fiber, making sure that you have at least 25 grams of fiber coming in every day. If you are focusing on a plant-based diet, which when I say plant-based diet, I don't mean vegetarian or vegan. No matter whatever, what, whatever like you know diet you want to call it, we all need to be eating lots of plants. So if you're a vegan, you don't get to go eat a bunch of tofurkey and you know all of those like fake chicken nuggets and call that like a healthy diet. Like you have to be eating lots of plants. And I say this because I was a vegetarian for eight uh, for ten years, and I actually you know ate like anywhere from six to nine servings of vegetables a day. My husband was also a vegetarian. When we started cooking together, he was like. I'm going to make beans with pasta and bread. And I was like, I can't eat that. Like, I will feel terrible if I eat that. And I was like, wait, you're a vegetarian? And like, that's what you eat? I'm like, you're a carbitarian. Like, that is something so, so different. And so, you know, I just want to say like, because people like, especially with keto right now, and people are like, should I do keto? And should I do paleo? And should I do vegetarian or vegan? And like, it's like, it depends. All right. There's no one size fits all diet for your life. And there is no one size fits all diet for every person. The only thing that we know uh, for sure is that you have to drink water, you need protein, and you have to have fats to build hormones. And you must eat a lot of vegetables. Like, and there's no study out there that's ever been like eating a lot of vegetables is a bad thing. <laughs> it's a very, very good thing. But if you're eating, you know, uh, lots of leafy greens, you're getting your cruciferous vegetables in. 
you know, I don't, I don't feel like any vegetable should really be off the table for people. Um, and I know there's people who are like, oh, you shouldn't eat sweet potatoes because they have lots of sugar. And it's like, well, but they also have lots of fiber and they have like vitamin A in them. And like, there's lots of, you know, beneficial things in that. And it's more about, you know, using your intuition around eating. But if you are someone who's struggling with estrogen dominance and painful cramps, you're going to want to be eating cruciferous vegetables. Um, before you know, anybody jumps in with like, what about goitrogens? <laughs> You're going to have to eat a lot, a lot of raw cruciferous vegetables. So like if I have a patient with Graves disease and, you know, they're working with their endocrinologist as well, like we're talking about like, okay, like, you know, can you possibly get in like 12 cups of raw cruciferous vegetables a day? And like, you're going to be eating all these things on top of these other components. Would that alone treat their graves? Absolutely not. It wouldn't. So if in a case of hyperthyroidism, when we try, we're trying to shut down the thyroid, we can't do that with like mass amounts of cruciferous vegetables. You're, you're going to be very hard pressed to do that on your own by eating steamed broccoli. And that's the other thing is that broccoli, cabbage, uh, cauliflower, kale, like all of these things, like it's not really common for people to eat those in high amounts raw either. Most of the time we're cooking them, that's going to break down goitrogens. And these foods are they have constituents that you will make dim and dim is a nutrient that helps your liver detox. But you have to understand that that entire pathway is also very dependent on stomach acid. So if you are stomach, somebody with hypochloridria or your hypothyroid, that will affect your stomach acid as well. Um, you know, if you are someone who doesn't chew your food, so every mom can put up their hand at some point of being like, oh yeah, I just stuck that piece of food in my mouth and I swallowed it and I ran after a child. Like, you don't shame yourself that humans alive probably because you did that. Like, so don't shame yourself. Um, but you're going to have to chew your food really well. And you might have to bring in something like, uh, you know, some apple cider vinegar for that to raise mm -hmm. that hydrochloric acid so that that process can develop. And that's why sometimes women are like, I was eating cruciferous vegetables. I didn't notice a benefit. And then it's like, well, do you have heartburn indigestion? You start going through it and they're like, yeah, yeah, you probably don't have enough stomach acid. That's where like, thank goodness we have supplements that you can use supplements for this. Um, and the other thing as well is that you might have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And that's something when people are like, I feel awful when I eat cruciferous vegetables or onions or garlic or... Um, like we have, uh, we have two detox systems. So we have the plant-based detox, which is for vegans. And we have the paleo detox. And people will sometimes say to me like, well, I went with the plant-based detox because I thought plant-based was better. And I'm like, actually like the paleo is the one I say go with. I know exactly which products you're talking about. Yeah. And because yeah. it's, it's highly absorbable, it helps heal the gut. Um, it doesn't aggravate, but the plant-based is based in pea protein which is arguably one of the best uh, you know, plant-based proteins out there that you could be taking like in a smoothie form. And this is what's really important for everybody listening. Yeah, it's true that's one of the best forms. Yes, it's true that it's well-absorbed in most people, but is it true for you? Because if you have SIBO, it's not going to be. You're going to be like, now I feel bloated. Now like my gut doesn't feel right. I'm pooping all the time or I can't poop. And people will sometimes say like, I think the supplement's making me sick. And I'm like, actually the supplement just helped you understand that you have an imbalance. It's something, there's something wrong in the ecology of your gut. That's what's making you sick. You just chose to feed it and you hadn't been feeding it. And so many of these people will say like, oh yeah, I actually had been avoiding apples and I had been avoiding this and avoiding that and not even realizing it because we tend to be like, that didn't make me feel good. I'm just going to go and eat this other thing. And then these people go get tested and they're like, sure enough, I had SIBO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I um, love that you're giving like this dietary foundation. You know, I'm in the hormone space too. And people are like, well, what do I take for estrogen dominance? And honestly, like that's not an easy answer to give because if you don't have like this foundation set up and you're eating sugar and you're constipated and like, it's just not so simple as like, let me give you a tincture. You really yeah. do have to have this foundation. And when this is all, you know, yeah, it can be a little complicated. Say you're already hypothyroid or you have, you know, low stomach acid. There's some things to figure out. But when that, and when and what I see is like when that foundation is really solid, 
your body does a better job of making and balancing hormones. Absolutely. No. And that is something. So if you guys didn't catch on, that's very much, I'm like, your diet and your lifestyle have to be the foundation. They have to be the first thing you do. And then from there, you can add supplements on. But, you know, as I say to people, like if you're on the pill, I tell you it depletes nutrients. I tell you you need to eat a healthy diet. Like, you know, and I go through like these, this is the general categories. It's actually like, it doesn't have to be super complicated for you. But if you think, oh, she also said take a multivitamin. I'll just keep eating fast food and pop the multivitamin. It's not going to do anything for you. Like it will help. It's better than nothing. But in terms of making symptoms go away or making you feel amazing, I mean, that's when people are like, I don't understand. I took Vitax for like a week and it didn't make me feel better. Well, that wasn't long enough. Also, were you sleeping? Well, no, no, I, I like sleep like four to six hours a night. Okay. And like, were you practicing stress reduction? Oh no, I hate my job. And like, oh, and how's your exercise? And you start going into it and you're like, you can't out Vitax a poor lifestyle. You can't out supplement a poor diet and lifestyle. And it has to be the foundation. And, um, you know, we actually, there was one of my Amazon reviews that I was reading and there was, they were like, oh my gosh, like her nutritional biochemistry background seriously comes through in this book. And I've had so many women write me and say, you know, most of the time I buy a health book and it's just like, here's all the supplements you need to take. And they're like, I feel like I've got all of these like diet and lifestyle therapies I can use to approach this. And then there's like, and then there's the supplements on top of that. And, you know, with post-birth control syndrome or with hormone imbalance in general, odds are you're going to need supplements. Like if you want to feel better sooner than later, you're going to, you need to use supplements as part of that. I mean, that's something I say, if you're in a healing journey or in a healing phase of your life, it's usually supplements or it's medication that you're bringing in to really help what, what you're doing every day. Does the diet and lifestyle help? Yes, it's non-negotiable. It's the stuff that'll keep you out of the doctor's office in the long term and make it so that you don't have to take, uh, you know, all of these supplements for the rest of your life. You know, I say to women, like, if you feel like you can only have a healthy period, like if you're taking high dose of turmeric and bringing in, like you've got all these buckets and buckets of supplements. And like, if you don't take those, then you don't feel well, or you can only poop if you have magnesium citrate. And if you take that away, you don't poop. Like you have never really addressed the underlying cause because yes, there are core supplements. Like, I mean, I live in the Pacific Northwest. You used to live in Portland. Like we have to take vitamin D. Like you have to, that's non-negotiable. You know, yeah. omega-3 fatty acids, those are something that are really beneficial to us in the long run. B vitamins, you know, or having a good multi prenatal, um, these kinds of things I think are really foundational. And, you know, the idea I used to think, I don't, I wonder, I wonder if you had this same kind of, uh, you know, epiphany as well as that. I remember when I started practicing and people would talk about detox and detox supplements. I'd be like, your body does that naturally. We can just support natural detox. And then it came like over the years to observe that like you can be doing that. But like most people actually feel better when they use detox supplements. And I, you know, now I've arrived at a place where I'm like, this world is pretty toxic. And yes, while you can like, you know, support your liver and detox and like, you know, we do castro packs and dry skin brushing and like, you know, making sure you're eating the right foods and you need to be doing all of that. Your body is still up against like a lot of things. Like so much. I think about like, I go to the park with my son and I hate that. I hate that my brain goes there now, but if there's no dandelions like in the grass anywhere, I'm like, we can't play here. Like there there's glyphosate here. And like, and yeah. I'm that neurotic mom, but I'm just like, that stuff gets in your bone marrow. And like, and there was just that like court case and like, we got yeah, to go. Yeah. yeah. And it's stuff like that where like, you can't get in like an Uber and like Uber is like a very popular thing these days without there being an air freshener in the car. Um, to that, I'm always like, you probably smoke, don't you? Like, why do you have an air freshener? In well, your and car? I think they want you to write a good review. So they want the car to smell good, you know? And it's like, oh God. But if you're <laughs> like us who live in like a scent free, like toxic free environment in anything above essential oils in terms of scent and I can't handle it. And I have to say like, it's just overwhelming. Um, something that's really interesting and that I sh I've shared this before is that when I was on hormonal birth control, so I did the pill for 10 years, I couldn't go into like Macy's and walk past the perfume counter without having excruciating headache right above my eyebrows, like feeling so gross. Like when I would come out of there, like same thing. And like part of it is I definitely overdid it. Like there were like the first half of my twenties, I was like, let me put on all the scented chemicals I can all the time. Oh Lord, it's so bad. Um, but 
but you know, after coming off that, I was just in um, Paris where I was living for a while with my family and they have this Sephora that you go into that's like a red carpet. Like you walk down the red carpet into Sephora. They're so like, they're so cute there and extravagant and you feel fancy like anywhere. <laughs> like you just feel fancy all the time. And so you're like, I'm going to Sephora because like I haven't slept. My kid's sick and I got to get some like something under my eyes. So people think I'm like not the crib keeper. Like there's... <laughs> I just dated myself. People are going to be like, if you were not like, if you didn't grow up in the eighties, you have no idea what I'm talking about with that <laughs> reference. But you know, walking down that red carpet, they have it set up and it's like every designer perfume, like yours there and like other ones that I don't know the name of, but they're fancy. And they're like spraying these cards and trying to hand them to you. There's like, and it's two layers deep. It's not just one layer of people spraying perfume, but it's like a second layer of people. And like, so it's like 25 sprays coming at you. And like, I realized, like I came out of Sephora and I felt fine. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, because, and I was thinking about how like in, you know, before I stopped the pill in my late twenties, I couldn't have handled that. Well, why? Because hormonal birth control, it impacts your liver detox capacity. So it, your liver works overtime because this drug is a high enough dose that you have to take to shut down your brain and ovary communication. And that's after your liver has processed it. So there are genetic and structural alterations that happen to the liver. And I write about this in my book, but in addition, it's depleting all the nutrients you need to actually run your detox pathways. And so this was just something really interesting to me. And so if you are somebody who you can't, you wouldn't have survived the red carpet in Paris of perfume attack, um, then, you know, odds are like your liver is in need of some support. That's a good indication that you need to do a detox. Um, yeah, but I'm just curious if you, if you ever went through that like experience as well of like, wow, no, people actually do need more support. Well, yeah. I mean, especially with my own experience with mold, like I really like, I mean, I, I actually remember before I found out I had mold, it was new year and I did a month long, amazing detox with apex energetics. And, um, usually that would make me feel good, but I was so exposed that it didn't do anything for me. Oh man. You know, like, you know, so I really was like, you know, most people, hopefully, yeah, they can do a nice shake and things like that, that you have and you feel better, but like, mm -hmm. yeah. And, or, you know, what you're going through in your family right now, like there's times where like the amount of detox and the amount of liver support you need is like so incredibly high just to like teeter on the edge of normal. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, it's, there's things in our, you know, just the compounding of things in our environment now is just so overwhelming to us. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm a health coach or naturopathic. I mean, we, I, I still do detox all the time. If I, mm -hmm. you know, if I like had a weekend away, I'm going to go home and drink shakes for five mornings straight. Absolutely. Because I just, again, like added another load to my body. So yeah, you know, we have to avoid and it affects our hormones as well. That's another piece that people need to know more about. Um, yeah. yeah. And I do it when I travel as well. So I'll just carry the, the packets are so nice. Cause like you can just mix these things in water. If you're in an airport and there's no food to eat, like, yay, you have something. Um, but yeah, I think about like being on planes, like we don't, there's not enough information about what we're exposed to. And I remember reading last year about how a lot of these airlines go through and they spray with pesticides before you get on the plane. So they are going through spraying with pesticides and then they turn on all the vents and circulate it. And then you go and you get on a plane. And then the idea that like, we're actually exposed to jet fuel while we're there. And like, nobody's actually that's been testing. Urine. Yeah. I don't know if you ever run those tests, but yeah, that all that stuff is so in us. Mm -hmm. all yeah. Those pretty planes you see flying overhead. That's all yeah. coming down. <laughs> No, totally. <laughs> yeah. And like, I mean, I think about like, you know, there's uh, several years ago, I was on a plane like three to five times out of the month and I would take this detox powder, drink it in the morning, like the morning I was getting on my flight, drink in the evening when I land, drink it and then prep again when I'm on my trip back. And, um, I just think about those little, those little things that we take for granted. I mean, everybody, I still am like, this is a miracle that like I'm in a plane and I'm going to be somewhere in five hours that like would take me days to drive across the country. Like we've like lost, like really our awareness around all of these things. I think even, um, 
you know, not having grown up with like an iPhone or a computer that um, I still find the novelty in the blue screens. And I feel like, you know, my son, he's, he likes to go ask Siri things. And I tell him like, you know, once upon a time we didn't have Siri. He's like, what did you do? And like, we looked it up in a book. There was these things called encyclopedias and you read stuff and it was actually better because on your way to finding that information, you learned even more. But it's something that once things start becoming, you know, modern day conveniences, mainstays in our life, we kind of stop questioning them. Like, and I think right. about, is his generation going to be questioning EMFs and light exposure and the things that we do, like, because we didn't grow up with that. Like we didn't have that. And so not having that, we question it, but like, you know, just for everybody listening to think about the things that you come into exposure to every day that maybe you're taking for granted. Like we sit on a bus and we commute, like that's a necessary thing to do, but how much emissions is coming, you know, from that bus? I mean, thankfully we're seeing like public transit starting to change. Like there's a lot of things starting to change, not quick enough to save the planet, but you know, fortunately we are seeing some positive movement in that direction. But the reality is, is that like, we're exposed to so many things that like, that we don't want to think about. It's scary to think about. Um, you guys are going to be like, oh, Dr. Brayton, like you'll know her at the park because she goes running away if there's no dandelions. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a really interesting tidbit. So you're encouraging regular detox, it sounds like too. Yeah, definitely okay. encouraging, especially like if you're on hormonal birth control, it's something that in my practice, like every oh, three okay. to four months, we're going to take you through. And so in the book, there's a two-week liver detox and that's oh, what okay. I take people oh, through because- that. You know, we started, so one, there's genetic alterations in the liver's expression of certain proteins that happen when you're on birth control, but the diagnosis of liver tumors, so benign liver tumors, yes, there's an increase of liver cancer with the pill, but um, benign liver tumors, we never diagnosed as many in women as we do now until we introduced the pill. And that's like, your liver is a very, very important organ. And the research is like, it's a benign liver tumor that tends to rupture easily. And it's like, well, there's a lot of blood flowing through there. That's a bad thing. But also you want to be able to use every cell, every single liver cell, it's doing a whole lot for you. And so as much as we can take care of the liver, like that's, I mean, that's, that's the, some of the secret sauce of like longevity and taking care of your hormones mm -hmm. for life. Like, you know, women, um, have asked like, okay, I'm perimenopause or menopausal. Like, can this book help me? And I'm very forthcoming that we're going to talk a lot about periods. So if you have no period, um, you might not want, you might not want to read about a whole lot of periods. Um, but you are going to learn about what your hormones are going to do. When we go, go through perimenopause and into menopause, we need liver support. We need to have our gut like optimized. We need adrenal health because when your ovaries stop, it's going to be your adrenals who take over for you. Our thyroid has to be dialed in. Odds are you going to struggle with your libido. And so I do talk about all of those things in my book. I do not get into bioidentical hormone replacement therapy in menopause. And that's been a big question is women are like, are you going to talk all about that? And it's like, that's, that's a bit of a different phase. Whereas right. like when we're talking about birth control and being in your menstrual years, there isn't like the number of women who are being offered bioidenticals is a much lower number. Yeah. I, I actually wanted to end on that too, a little bit about the age question, because I have had clients. 49 years old on the pill. Oh my gosh. Symptom management. Yeah, yeah. Because they had their period too often. So it's, it's sort of like either hysterectomy or get on the pill. And I'm like, this is like really beyond sense when you're beyond the age, you could make a baby and you're still on birth control pill. Like we've got to figure this out another way. And that's a time you can hundred percent be in estrogen dominance. We kind of mm -hmm. all are after the age of 40. Um, and then another population I'm like have a huge heart for is is teens because mm -hmm. you know that's just such an important time to learn about your body and like you say you're often just off for I was as a teen you know I was having pain, painful periods I was an athlete I probably wasn't getting enough nutrients and I was put on the pill really early mm -hmm. um I, I knew right away I couldn't tolerate it. I probably only stayed on it a couple of months. I just am not a pill person, um, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. But I, yeah, I really, it really makes me sad that still so many young women are being offered the pill um, so early. And so I just really appreciate that this education is available for them. You know, if you've got a 12 year old, she may not read this whole thing, but you can read it and you can get her some proper magnesium and some fish oil and like make sure she eats some vegetables at dinner and drinks water. And this is a great, 
foundation for her. So we are cycling a long time. How many mm -hmm. years is that? 30, 40 years. So yeah. And it's like the first time in history that we are seeing women who have never actually cycled, like where they were put on birth control at such a young oh, age. Gosh. And then they're just like you said, they're 49. And, the, and sometimes doctors will say, just, you know, when you go through menopause and your period stops then stop birth control. And I'm like, well, your doctor just know that's not a period, right? Like that's a withdrawal bleed from a medication that you're having. I had a 60 year old mm -hmm. still bleeding who was on the pill. And I'm like, your risk when you're on birth control, a stroke and a heart attack climbs exponentially as we enter into our forties and certainly later. And, you know, to your point of like, what a short-sighted approach for a complex transition, which is menop menopause. Why is your period coming too frequently? Because you have the absence of progesterone. You're not ovulating. Your body's like, I want to, but I really don't want to. Well, I kind of want a baby. No, I don't want a baby. Like that's what's going on. And you're right. It's estrogen dominance. Now they come in with birth control. They just lay some estrogen dominance on that. They start to deplete nutrients. They're shutting down liver detox, like in some capacity, because I mean, just losing your B vitamins alone is going to make your liver struggle. And then in addition to that, hormonal birth control places strain on the adrenal and thyroid, which is everything a perimenopause, a menopausal woman needs to transition successfully. But let's like talk about like what else, like the pill is going to gobble up all your testosterone. Also something that women start to need, you know, and they may need this hormone replacement therapy as they transition into menopause. Like DHEA is declining. That's an anti-aging hormone. Birth control isn't helping with that. And so if you are a woman who's in perimenopause and your doctor's passing you the pill, you know, and you don't want to get pregnant because you can still get pregnant, you know, it's time for a different conversation. And if it's for symptom management, certainly like you need to talk to them about like, well, what about like, you know, what about something that's actually going to make sure that I maintain my bone and brain health? Like birth control is not going to help with that. In fact, a study just came out showing it, you know, how we were told it would help with your bone mass. Turns out it doesn't, it does the opposite. And so oh, no. that's problematic in women, uh, you know, in this, in this period of life. The other thing is that the being on the pill can lead to vaginal dryness, pain with intercourse, pain with orgasm, vaginal atrophy, women who are transitioning into menopause and in that perimenopausal phase, they're already at higher risk for that. That's a symptom that comes along with that. And so it's very short-sighted. It doesn't do anything to protect like your, you know, urinary system, your, your, your vagina, your uterus, your brain, your heart, your ovaries, like it, your natural hormones do that. And so can bioidentical hormones, but synthetic man-made hormones that are meant to shut down the reproductive system can't do what we need them to do as we make that transition. And, you know, women ask all the time, like, are bioidentical hormones as bad as the pill in terms of everything you're saying? I'm like, bioidentical hormones, most of the time now, are used topically because we've come to understand if you don't put estrogen in your mouth, you have a way lower risk of having a stroke or any of those things. But having topical is a much lower dose and having something that's working with your body opposed to trying to shut down your body is a much lower dose. And so understand that bioidenticals are designed to be used with women at that stage of life. Hormonal birth control is designed to be used on young, healthy females with no medical risk and no pre-existing conditions. Mm. So one, yeah, when one is to kind of suppress a hormonal activity and one is to enhance mm -hmm. hormonal activity. Yeah. I, I broke down and got on my identical three or four months ago because I was, dude, sign like, me up when it's I know. my time, like it's sign me up. <laughs> it's amazing. It's not a fit for everyone, but like there's times, yeah, like I've been through a lot with my health and like I have a hard time herbally at 44 trying to get my period to do what I want it to do, even with all I know. Mm -hmm. I'm loving these creams. <laughs> They're fantastic. So. I, I have to say, you know, working with so many women prescribing bioidentical hormones and then those who decide to transition off, like we don't really know right now the camps are split. There's people who are like, oh, you should only stay on for five years. Then there's other people and they're 100% right. The time, the second you transition, you start aging rapidly. And so there's a, the other camp is to advocate to stay on low dose for the rest of your life. But working with so many women and seeing how they get their life back 
seeing how like, I mean, I, I've just witnessed the most amazing things of women's relationships with their children, with their partner, with that their work, uh, women who start traveling, women who get back into painting, like, and these might sound like, like, oh yeah, that's nice if you can paint. Like, no, women who are passionate about their art their whole life and now like don't even want to get out of bed, like, or women with like repeat urinary infection, urinary tract infections, or, you know, dry, vaginal dryness is something where, you know, sometimes people are like, just use lube, but sometimes these women have vaginal dryness that when they go to the restroom and they wipe their tissue tears and they bleed, like oh. it can be that bad, but to just see the profound change in women. I mean, it's always been something that I think, you know, very, I think early in my thirties, it was very easy to be like, Oh, I don't know if I would do that. And now, you know, I have a birthday this weekend. And as I come up, like I've got a few more years till 40, but just everything I observed, I'm like, Nope, I'm in. I'm definitely in. And it's going to be even better when I get there. And um, I'm excited that like I have that option available because I think like I look at like, you know, my, even my grandma that they didn't have that wasn't really an option of things yeah. to do and how difficult that was for her. It doesn't have to be that difficult. And the exciting thing is, is that a lot of women in menopause start these bioidenticals and start having the best sex of their life because they're not worrying about babies. That's also signed me up for that. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, my, uh, yeah, I won't go into too much detail, but <laughs> yeah, like my sex drive came back. Like, I'm like, I don't even remember when my sex drive was this good. Like, I don't, I don't even recall it. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, it's phenomenal. It's, it's really fun. So I think, yeah, I think you the next spokesperson for like, there's going to be some compounding pharmacy. That's going to be like, I love it. I, it's time to, um, yeah, I think that's a great conclusion. It's like, we have options. We don't just have to take the pill. We can go beyond the pill. There's lots of options at every age. Um, so if you're still cycling, yeah, I'd love for people to buy it for themselves to learn about the hormones, um, buy it for your daughter, you know, buy it for your daughter-in-law. Well, maybe not who's trying to get pregnant <laughs> <laughs> nicely and gently. Cause there's just a lot of instances where, you know, you're feeling off and you do need to, it's just time to learn. It's time to learn. I wanted to share with you. I know we're wrapping up, but today's Valentine's day. And there are several women who have sent me photos that their partner or their husband, boyfriend bought them the book for Valentine's Day as their Valentine's Day gift. Are you kidding me? And I was like, oh my gosh. And one of them was like, he actually bought a copy for himself and started reading it and like has been, or no, he's been doing audible. And then he bought her copy of the book. And he was like, this book is so good. And has helped me understand what's going on with you that I wanted to get it for you too. And I was like, there goes my mic. No, you literally, the, the mic is dropping. That's like know, unheard right? of. That's amazing. When that happened, like, I don't know. I'm like, what happened here? I don't know. Let me scoot back in. Yeah, you think um, generationally, like that's huge. That's huge. It's so huge. And I would have never thought like, a male partner is purchased because I was like, is that a cool Valentine's gift? Are you like cool with that? Like, it's not the traditional. And the these women are like, this is like the best thing. Like this, one of them was like, nothing says I love you. Like, I want to help you balance your hormones. And I was like, oh my God, this is the sweetest thing I ever heard. <laughs> like It's insane. I mean, yeah. And this is, we can boohoo. They're still giving out the pill and all this stuff. Like there's also this like awakening happening. That's just so important. And yeah, I just, I'm like, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to thank you because I really, I, I don't have a son. I don't have a daughter, but maybe he'll be buying this book for his girlfriend <laughs> someday. I just really want, like, as we move forward generationally to like, just be more aware. Um, and it's just such important work. So thank you. I bought mine on Amazon. Where else can people buy the book? You can get it anywhere. So it's Barnes and Nobles, Target, um, Google Target? Play. <clears throat> yeah. Girl. So Target decided to, <laughs> so Target, we got this message that was like, Target is out. They don't want anything like they're They're not going to carry this book. Cause they're like super picky. And then the next thing I know is that people are like, I got the book in Target and I'm like, what happened? And apparently there was such an influx to Amazon that Target was like, and at that time, Amazon was selling it for like $26 and it's $27.99 and Target came in at like $18. Target was like, we're going to sell it for $18. Um, and then we Online watched- Online or on the shelf too? 
Um, some people have gotten it on the shelf. They'll price match. So Amazon has now dropped down and it's only in certain targets, but you can get it online, but, uh, Amazon price dropped. And so Amazon's down at like 1829. And so you got like, you guys did this for everybody listening. If you bought the book, you actually made it even more accessible to people. I didn't even, I don't, I don't totally understand how all of these things work, but, um, it was pretty yeah, amazing. They dropped the price of a hardcover. I'm just learning that too. If a lot, if it's selling well, it'll drop the price by like eight bucks. Yeah. Well, it's usually, uh, let's see, $27.99 and they dropped it down to $18.29. And like, they, they get like, keep trying to come under target and then target will go a little bit under them. It's, um, it's very interesting to watch. I'm like, how do they know what each other are doing? Um, yeah, but, um, I think I love seeing my friend's books out. And I've yeah. never seen a friend's book at Target. So I might have to go to like five Targets and see. Yeah, it's not, I like, I called the Target in Portland and it, it wasn't here, but it was in oh, Powell's okay. in Portland and it was in Barnes and Nobles. And, um, you know, I, I, it's a really big deal to be in Powell's in Portland when you're a Portlander. Like I went and found my book and I signed a bunch and then people messaged and were like, none of your books are left. I'm like, okay, that's good. Let me, I'll come back and I'll do it again. Um, but yeah, no, but the book is showing up all over the world and I, I was naive. I thought like you publish a book and it's in the United States and then like maybe Canada. Cause like, you know, they're right there. And then someone sends me a photo and they're like in Finland in this independent bookstore. My book's there. Huh. It's in Germany. It's in Australia. It showed up in Japan yesterday. Um, it's in the Netherlands. It's in France because <laughs> my French people have my back. I'm like the places it's been showing. It showed up in South Africa. I was like, how is this even like, I didn't, I had no, I'm like, how do you even know who I am? Like yesterday with Japan, I was like, how does Japan even know who I am? Like, what is this? And it's pretty phenomenal. Well, I don't probably know. get translated then, which is also a great thing because it's not just in this country. We need this information, you know? Well, and then it'll be fun. Cause I'll be like, look, they they'll send me a copy of a book and I'll be like, look, I can't read it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's like my ultimate career goal is to have a book that like lets me tour the world. Like if I can somehow like weasel that in where I get to tour the world, like yeah. signing books. I'm like, okay. I well, will that's, it's up. funny. Cause that was like, everyone's like, you need to do a book tour in the U S and I was like, but there, like, there's more photos on social media from Germany right now. And then, um, yeah. And then I'm going to be speaking somewhere in, I'm trying to think, Cro- is it Croatia? Maybe there's like, a, I'm trying to think where it is right That's now. A place. I'm like, this are you going embarrassing. There? Yeah, there's a couple of like little countries. Um, they like because I live in the United States, so like <laughs> physically speaking, but um, but they're they're mighty countries that I'm gonna be going and speaking in. So yeah, I'm actually oh, going going so you're living my dream a few years early. <laughs> Tell me how it goes. <laughs> oh, totally, but like I'm also like, yeah, and I'm a sick kid, so I don't know how this is gonna. I'm like push, I'm like, can we do this like summer? <laughs> like, let's like people, yeah. I had somebody that was um they were were wanting me in the UK, like in the next few weeks. And I was like, fine. I, I just came back. I just switched time zones. Like I need a minute here, but, um, right. That yeah. wasn't like, that wasn't necessarily, you know, as we talked before, you know, manifesting all this stuff that wasn't necessarily in the plans, but there's things that the universe hands you and you just say, thank you. Um, like people in Japan and Korea was the other one. I was like, Korea knows who I am. Like, like this is so you crazy. Little, you know, you got that black hair. You could, I can see you in Korea. <laughs> but it, it just so was like, I don't know. I grew up in a, a time. Um, and you, I mean, you know, you'll remember this pen pals, like you wrote a letter to someone and you hoped that like, they would write you back. And now to be like, I'm on Instagram I'm talking to women all over the world live and they're all like showing me my book like this. I still get astounded by like how the internet works. <laughs> like, it's so great. And I have a feeling it'll be a slow burn and it will get translated. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's something that, you know, we all need to get educated on and not everyone's going to do it at the same time. So yeah, I hope it's a great adventure for you. Thank you. <laughs> well, and thank you so much for coming on. Um, and then the, the website is drbrighton.com. So D R B R I G H T E N. And then if you grab the book, you can grab some uh, gratitude gifts at beyond the pill book.com. Pillbook.com. Okay. We've yeah, got a bunch of goodies there for you. Okay. We'll get all those in the notes. Thank you so much, Dr. Brighton. It was great to be with you as always. 
Yeah. And I miss you here in Portland, but I know you're enjoying sunny Arizona. You know what? I wish I could swim. Like it's raining right now. It's oh, really? supposed to get a half an inch of rain today. Every now oh, and then. that's, you know what? I, um, it's, I'll be in Arizona in June, which is like, apparently like the big time rainy, like crazy rainstorms. Yeah, yeah, and, um, so fun. yeah, I was at, uh, my Brody green has a retreat there and I was at that last year and, uh, we were outside like practicing yoga and it just started pouring rain in the desert. It was like the most magical experience. I was like, I mean, yoga aside, like the rain pour in Arizona, I'm like, I just had no clue how gorgeous it is. It's so. amazing. And it smells amazing. So. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, we will hang out in the rain here. Um, thanks again. <laughs> Bye, everybody.